Well, hi, and welcome once again to Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay, and this is vodcast number 13. Uh, and today, the topic that we're going to be talking about is the pancreas, insulin, and diabetes. Uh, these, uh, this, of course, is a topic which, unfortunately, um, I think just about all of us uh, either have a family member or a friend, uh, or some of you I know even yourselves are affected by this. Um, and so this is a pretty good point in the semester to talk about this a little bit uh, because it directly relates to uh, carbohydrates and many of the things that we've been talking about, macromolecules, proteins, um, enzymes, the whole ball of wax. So uh, this is a, a point where it, it makes a little bit of sense to talk about this uh, and see how all of this works. Um, this is a good point to update your table of contents, update your uh, the organization of your notebook. And here we go, we're going to talk about blood glucose regulation. Um, for those of you who may not know, diabetes is a disease that affects the ability of your body to regulate the amount of sugar in your blood. Uh, I'm going to start off by showing you some measurements um, of of people um, and this is from two two people and this is uh, some the blood sugars uh, readings that were taken from each of them as they uh, went about um, a day and you can see person A on the left uh, if you compare that to person B on the right um, you'll notice that uh, the numbers go up and down uh, quite dramatically um, they start off in the morning, this person's, uh, the, the amount of sugar in their blood was quite high compared to this person. Uh, shortly after eating breakfast, they went up even more where this person's went up a little bit, but not nearly as much. Uh, after a little snack, this person's continued to go up. Uh, they went on a hike and then, as you can see, uh, this person's came down a little bit, but person A, uh, the sugar in their blood came down quite a lot. Again, after a meal, they went up quite dramatically. Um, and so you just see this pattern of uh, the ups and downs are um, just much more extreme. Um, and this is an example, of course, of homeostasis, which is our body's uh, ability to regulate its internal environment. So this is, uh, of course, one of the terms that we've already talked about. What homeostasis is, is, uh, as I just said, the ability of the body to maintain a stable environment. Um, we think of temperature uh, often as an example of this, and it is probably the most well-known example, but it is by no means the only example. Uh, regulating the amount of uh, sugar in the blood is also uh, an important homeostasis function. Um, one, another term that most of you have heard at some point, but you may not know exactly what it is, is uh, the idea of a hormone. And a hormone is really just a chemical message um, that is secreted into the blood by uh, an endocrine gland, gland, and that's just a gland that uh, produces these chemical messages. Most of these things are proteins, a few of them are lipids, um, but what all hormones do is they are secreted by a gland in one part of the body and they affect cells uh, in all many other parts of the body and the, those other cells that they affect are called target cells. Uh, the uh, Some other important terms and this we've already talked about is the pancreas. Uh, the pancreas we already uh, know that it secretes digestive enzymes directly into the stomach, but it also makes several hormones that it uh, secretes into the blood. And one of them, uh, of course, is uh, the hormone called insulin. And we'll define that here. So uh, insulin is a hormone that's secreted by the pancreas, uh, and it targets cells that are in the liver and in muscle cells. Uh, and what insulin does is causes cells to take glucose in from the blood and convert it into starch. Uh, we now know that glucose is, of course, a monomer that makes up uh, polymers such as starch. Uh, it can also be broken down even further and used to uh, be converted into fat, into uh, lipids. 
another uh, hormone that is secreted by the pancreas that is not as well known as insulin, but uh, is also just as important. Uh, it's called glucagon. Uh, glucagon um, is also, uh, it, as I said, it's secreted by the pancreas, uh, and it has just the opposite effect of insulin. It causes cells to uh, break down their starch into uh, glucose monomers and then release those into the blood. So it has just the opposite effect of insulin, where insulin uh, takes sugar out of the blood, converts it into starch, causes it to be converted into starch. Glucagon uh, causes starch to be converted into glucose, and then that glucose ends up going um, into the bloodstream. Um, just as a, a quick little refresher, this shows you where the pancreas is. Uh, the pancreas sits behind the stomach. Um, in this diagram, of course, here's the stomach right here, this uh, little um, kind of uh, half moon shaped organ. And it's a little hard to tell in this diagram, but the pancreas sits uh, behind the stomach. Okay. Um, we say that insulin and glucagon are antagonistic. Now that doesn't mean that they don't like each other. Uh, what that term means is that they perform opposite functions, which we've already seen. Um, some things that cause the amount of sugar in the blood to increase are shown on the left, and things that cause blood sugars to go down are shown on the right. Um, so, of course, if you eat anything, particularly foods that are high in sugar or starch, um, that uh, those uh, molecules are going to be uh, absorbed into your blood. Uh, and then, uh, so that's going to cause the amount of sugar in your blood to go up. Things that cause the blood to go down uh, is if physical activity. So if you're exercising, running, uh, doing something physically active that will uh, require energy from uh, those that blood sugar and cause the uh, amount of sugar in your blood to go down. Now these hormones also have play a big role in regulating that amount of sugar. Um, so if the amount of insulin goes down, that will cause blood sugars to go up. Uh, however, if the glucagon goes up, that also causes blood sugars to increase. Um, so you can see by looking at this table um, that glucagon and insulin oppose each other. They do opposite things. One makes uh, blood sugars go up. Glucagon makes the blood sugar go up. Insulin makes blood sugar go down. Okay, another way to look at this, or another way to think about this, is this idea of a balance. Um, the quote-unquote normal level of uh, sugar in the blood is about 90 milligrams per deciliter. Now, that's kind of an odd measurement in there. This is the only thing that I know of where deciliters are used. It's not used very often. The deciliter, of course, is a tenth of a liter. Um, uh, but that is the, the units that are, are used for uh, blood glucose levels. Um, so if everything is sitting at, at this sort of normal level, um, then you can see on this balance that uh, some things are going to cause it to this balance to tip one way or the other. So uh, from the chart that we just saw, uh, if we eat something, right, so if we eat, say, a candy bar, um, that will cause our this this balance to tip to the other side, right? Which will cause uh, basically cause the, the blood sugar to go up. Um, this uh, can have adverse health effects over the long term, and uh, in our next unit after fall break, we'll be seeing um, why that is. So, as you can see from this little diagram, there are two things that can bring that. Uh, back into balance, either an increase in physical activity or uh, an increase in insulin. To a person who does not have diabetes, who has a uh, well-functioning um, uh, system, they're going to produce some insulin in response to that. So if you don't have diabetes and you eat a candy bar, uh, your pancreas will produce some insulin and it will cause that blood sugar level to come back down to its uh, normal point. On the other hand, uh, if you or someone with diabetes were to take a shot of insulin, 
um, without eating anything, uh, that causes your blood sugar to go dangerously low. Uh, this has a very uh, negative effect on your brain. The cells in your brain uh, and your nervous system don't have any way of storing um, don't don't have storage uh, starch storage the way your muscles do uh, and they will they are in danger of just shutting down uh, so if your blood sugar goes low uh, sometimes people can become unconscious have seizures uh, a variety of very uh, very bad things so obviously this is something that you don't want to have happen uh, so uh, in a normal person again if that were the case uh, if their blood sugar became too low, normally what they would do is they would stop secreting insulin. They would, uh, their uh, pancreas would secrete a little bit of glucagon uh, and then cause the blood sugar to come back up uh, to its balanced level. Okay, so that's the, uh, the basic idea of how these um, antagonistic hormones work. Uh, another little animation that I wanted to show you um, how this works. Uh, the big purple thing in the middle, of course, represents a muscle cell. Now, I hope you understand that muscle cells don't actually look like this. Um, the, the walkway or the sidewalk or road, whatever you want to call it, uh, down the, across the bottom of your screen down here represents your bloodstream. Uh, so here comes some, uh, some blood cells coming through the bloodstream. And of course, uh, you don't have candy canes going through your bloodstream, but you do have some uh, some blood glucose mixed in uh, along with that. So this is a, a, a normal situation and if this is, uh, if this is a, a level of sugar that is too high in your blood, uh, the thing that will happen of course is you, uh, your pancreas uh, will release some insulin. Um, and what that insulin does in effect is it comes along and unlocks, uh, it fits like a lock and a key. Uh, insulin is a protein. Uh, and on the, the surface of your muscle cells, you have receptors that um, function like a little doorway. Um, they're the receptor, well, the receptors actually work like a little keyhole uh, where the insulin comes in. That triggers a whole set of uh, processes in the cell that allows sugar to diffuse into the muscle cell. Okay, uh, if, the glu if the insulin goes away, uh, then the door closes uh, and the blood sugars are, are going to go up. Okay, so without insulin, blood sugars, sugar stays in the blood. Um, if the insulin comes along, unlocks the door, then the sugar is going to leave the blood and go into the cells. Okay, so as I said, and as I'm sure you're aware, uh, these cells don't actually look like this. The blood cells, that, that's a pretty good representation of what they look like, but everything else doesn't look like this. Um, so what I want to leave you with is uh, a image of another protein. Um, and this protein is the insulin receptor along with a molecule of insulin. And these of course are proteins. Uh, and as you can see in this diagram, these are just incredibly complex molecules. Uh, the term macromolecule, of course, as we've been saying, means big molecule. Uh, and each of these little bitty uh, things here represents one amino acid. So you can see from looking at this, this, this structure here uh, that looks kind of like a big X, um, this is the receptor uh, that's on, there are thousands or millions of these things on the surface of every single one of your muscle cells. Um, and uh, this is the receptor that receives the insulin molecule. And this is another protein. This is uh, what insulin looks like. Uh, and this is the, so this represents the keyhole and this represents the key uh, that unlocks that um, little doorway that allows uh, glucose to come into your muscle cells. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave this uh, little uh, sweet discussion off. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and this concludes podcast number 13, and I hope you have a great day.